In this video, we'll write the Lewis structure for CuOH2, copper 2 hydroxide. Copper, that's a metal. Then we have oxygen and hydrogen. These are both non-metals, and they're bound tightly together in what's called the hydroxide ion. So we have a metal, some non-metals. That's an ionic compound. The metal is going to transfer valence electrons to the non-metals. So we'll write Cu, and then we'll put an OH on either side. We can see from the name, this Roman numeral 2, that tells us there's a 2 plus charge on the copper. To balance that out, each one of these hydroxide needs to have a 1 minus. 2 times the 1 minus, that'd give us a negative 2, and that would balance out this 2 plus here. So we'll write 2 plus for the Cu, minus here. So copper had two valence electrons. It gave one to this group here, and then the other one here. Because it lost electrons, it now has a positive charge because electrons are negative. This has gained a negative charge, and so is this. Let's replace this OH minus, the hydroxide ion, with a Lewis structure. We'll then put brackets around the hydroxide ion, and that's the Lewis structure for copper 2 hydroxide, CuOH2. Because we have this positive here, it's attracted to the negatives, and that's what holds together this ionic bond. Understand that this is what we call a formula unit. Normally, copper 2 hydroxide is a crystal, and it's made up of a pattern of repeating formula units. But this is useful because it shows us how the electrons were transferred in CuOH2. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for copper 2 hydroxide. Thanks for watching.